Welcome to Family Church. We are a diverse, spirit-filled, life-giving church. Healing hurts, building relationships, and developing leaders. My name is Ashley, and I am so excited that you've connected to our page today. Be sure to grab a notebook, pen, and paper, your phone, however you want to take notes, and get ready for today's message. My wife and I, Cynthia, are starting a new series today, beginning of the year, about relationships, about marriage. Yep. Now, if you're single in the room, this is perfect. Get some information so you don't screw your marriage up before you get married, okay? So please do not tune out if you think, well, this doesn't apply to yeah. me. Today's topic is a hot topic. Say hot topic. There's a lot of hot topics out today, <laughs> but this one's a hot topic. It's so hot, I can't touch the title. Cindy's going to have to tell you what we're talking about today. Are you guys ready? All right. Today's topic is submission. <laughs> submission in marriage. Yes. Hot topic. The Bible says in James 4.10, submit yourself therefore to God, resist the devil and he will flee. And when we think of the word submit there, that's not a problem. We can submit to God. Because after all, the Bible says that one day, every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that yeah. Jesus is Lord. So one day, we're going to be forced to submit. So we might as well choose to do it. We know that God could squish us like a bug if he wanted to. He's the creator of the heavens and the earth and the sea and everything mm -hmm. in it. So the idea of submitting to God is pretty easy. But submit to her? <laughs> and her submit to me? <laughs> Come on now. Before we start this conversation, we must need to pray yes. so we don't get up in the flesh. <laughs> Father, we come to the name of Jesus and we pray that our conversation today is directed by you. Let us understand your word. Let us have a picture of a healthy marriage, healthy yes, relationships sir. that honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So as we get this conversation started, when you hear the word submit, especially when a man is telling his wife, submit, woman. I'm just kidding. <laughs> On the screen behind me, what image is in your mind when you hear the word submission? Do you think of an MMA fighter being choked out and forced against his will and tapping out, okay, okay, okay? Or do you see this like romantic, Aww. your breath stinks. <laughs> but I'm still going to stand here breathing it in, kissing you because I love you. And I was going to pretend like your breath doesn't bother me. Right? Which one, which one do you guys see? Probably more MMA, right? <laughs> because this, the idea of submission has this connotation that you're forcing me to do something against my will. Yeah. I don't want to do what you're asking me to do. Gentlemen, it's like your wife when she asks you to take out the trash in the middle of your favorite movie, in the middle of your favorite show. Uh, can you take out the trash? Yeah, I'll get to it. No, now? I want to punch you in the face <laughs> so hard right now, <laughs> right? But she wants me to do what she wants me to do when she wants me to do it, and I don't want to. Come on, somebody. I'm, I, it got really lonely just now. <laughs> Every dude forsook me just now. Well, come on. You know when they say we'll get to it. Do they really get to it? No. Okay. That's a lie. <laughs> Does the word submission in your marriage context trigger you? Have you been manipulated or controlled by the concept of submission? Have you, has a scripture been used? I mean, the biggest one is like, well, your body doesn't belong to you. We are one flesh. Trying to manipulate into doing things. Mm -hmm. I think we need to talk about it. Because yeah. we need to have healthy relationships, but this is part of it. This idea right here, this concept of submission, is at the core of a healthy marriage. Yeah. But we just don't understand it. And we use it as abuse. Let's take a look at Ephesians 5.22. Wives, submit to your husbands. I like how this is starting. 
Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. Mm -hmm. For the husband is the head of the wife, even even as Christ is the head of the church, his body, and is himself its savior. Now, as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit in everything to their husbands. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, so that he might present the church to himself in splendor without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. In the same way, husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. All right. So I think we need to take a closer look at this passage. And when you study out word in the Bible, the first thing that you should do is look at the pretext and the posttext, which basically is just what comes before or after the verses that you're reading. Because a lot of times when you only read that verse without the pretext or the posttext, you take it out of context. A lot of people skip all together verse 21. They go straight to 22 and all the way on because to 28. Because 22 gives men such power. <laughs> but he put 21 there for a reason. 21 <laughs> is the context by which yeah. 22 through 28 is to be read. So we put 21, verse 21, as the context by which we are now going to study 22 through 28. Yes. So Ephesians 5, 21 says, submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. Submitting to one one another, another, how? Out of the reverence Reverence. for Christ. Mm -hmm. So it's saying submitting to one another in submission to Christ in a way that honors God, that pleases God. Yeah. And so... When you get to the rest of the passage, you have to read it in light of the fact that you're submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. It kind of makes you read the whole rest of the passage in a different light. First it says, wives, honor your own husbands, meaning not somebody else's. (laughs) All right. And side note, if you're single and you're dating, you do not have a husband. Which means you are not submitting to your boyfriend. You are not submitting to that bum. (laughs) Okay. I know there's I know there's these social media dudes out there who are like telling dudes how to act and how to you know what their woman is like and and teaching these guys Mm -hmm. how to be uh, machismo and man, dude, that's not that's not it, dude. Like. I had a conversation with some ladies at the uh, young adults event telling me how these guys they were dating, the guys were telling them, well, you need to treat me like a husband and cook for me and clean for me to see if this is, and I'm like, honey, (laughs) he hasn't earned that. Nope. He don't pay your bills. He don't pay your bills. He hasn't put a ring on your finger. He hasn't walked down the aisle. He's made no commitment to you. He doesn't deserve yep. to be treated like a husband. This says submit to your own husband. Mm. And dude, honestly, if you think you're that, you're not. You're not that dude. You're not that guy. Yeah. That your girlfriend needs to submit to you. Like you have some self-insecure problems mm-hmm. trying to come across like that. I love you. But you need counseling. (laughs) And to take this further, when it comes to submitting to your husband, the scripture is meaning it in light of submitting to your husband in matters that are aligned with the character of God or his word. What that means is if he's trying to coerce you to submit for things that are ungodly or against your own moral compass, those are not things that you need to submit to. Come on, honey, let's just cheat our taxes. Let's just exactly. cheat our taxes. Come on, let's just, let's just, there's ways around this. Yeah. I always say Submit! <laughs> I always say God's not bipolar. He's not going to give you his word in the Bible and tell you that you need to live your life like this, but then tell you to submit to somebody who's telling you to live your life completely contrary to his word. 
Yeah, God is not going to make you submit to somebody and something and do things yeah. that are contrary to his word. Mm -hmm. God is not going to ask you to break the law yeah. if it's contrary to his word. Come on. Mm -hmm. Right? And so just use wisdom. Yeah. When someone's trying to make you do something that's against your moral compass, you just have to ask, is this love? Yeah. Is this love? If not, you mm -hmm. need to have that conversation. I told you this is a hot topic, <laughs> okay? Because this topic of submission is, is fighty. It's me overpowering you, me yeah. making you serve me, me controlling or dominating you. And, and let's just talk about that. Anytime that my wife has made me angry, in all honesty, it's quite often. <laughs> I just hold it in. I'm just, I'm just mature. <laughs> It's because I couldn't control her behavior. Yeah. She wasn't doing something I wanted her to do. Mm -hmm. Or she was behaving in a way that I thought was annoying and she wouldn't stop. Whatever it is. Right? So it comes back to control. Yeah. You're not doing what I'm telling you to do, so now I'm angry. And so the way that I would observe that, and, and I've worked on it very hard, is I would blow up. Mm -hmm. I'd get loud. I, I would yell. I would scream. I'd use profanity. And the louder I got, the more she would shut down and she began to cry. And then I began to realize, like, I'm so lonely like this. Yeah. I'm yelling at the person that I'm spending my life with in order to try to control her. And now she doesn't want to talk to me. I'm like, dude, like, there's got to be an answer to this. There's got to be another way that we can mm -hmm. do this. Yeah. Because this is absolutely lonely. So what if we change the word? If we change the word from submission, because that's a hot topic trigger word, to the word honor. Yeah. Wives, honor your husband. Yeah. Show him honor. This word honor has a social term. It describes elevating one another. Elevating one another. Yeah. Most occurrences in the Old Testament use the uh, Hebrew word kabod. K-A-B-O-D, kabod, to talk about this word honor. In the New Testament, it would use the Greek word tameo. These terms are generally used to honor a fellow man or a fellow being, though in some cases, it talks about how we are to honor God, yeah. kabod or tameo. Mm -hmm. But the root of the word kabod literally means heavy or weighty. Heavy or weighty? And here's what I want to describe now. There have been times where not only did we not get along, but there have been times where I just downright did not like my wife. Where I was like, I don't like you. I don't like mm -hmm. you as a human being. Mm -hmm. Been there? <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's good to know. <laughs> <laughs> in those moments where I struggled to find something to love in the yeah. moment, the only thing that I could come back to to continue the relationship was what is it that I value about you as a human being? Yeah. What value do you have to me in our lives? And really one of the main anchors is there's nobody that could have raised my kids the way that she raised my kids. Mm -hmm. Nobody. There's a weight, there's a weight to that. Mm -hmm. There's a heaviness to that. Yeah. That she did that job, that assignment, that calling like no one else. Mm -hmm. And so, okay, maybe we're having a fight about what color she painted the wall in the bedroom. This one time, oh my God. <laughs> Remember that yellow paint that you picked out for the bedroom? All right, in my defense, it was called Bavarian cream. That's off white to me. No, it, it was, was hot yellow. yellow. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the figurative meaning is to give weight to someone, to honor someone, to grant this person permission or to. Per, um, yeah. Grant them a position in your life, a position of authority. 
okay? Now, what authority does my, ha- my wife have? My wife can say things to me that no one else can say, <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. We have, she has that access to me. Now, what I've asked her not to do, gentlemen, you'll understand this, what I've asked her not to do is to correct me yeah. in front of our children. Mm-hmm. Oh, man, you want to set me off? Like, correct me in front of the kids. Yeah. It's dishonor. Mm-hmm. It's dishonor. You, 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 you've kind of cut the feet out of, out of your man by correcting him in front of the kids. Now, if there's something that needs to be said, if I'm acting in a way that you don't want me to act in front of the kids, either invite me out of the room. <laughs> or we've taken to texting each other. <laughs> if one of us is a little out of pocket, we'll be like, yo, you good? Like, bring that down a notch. <laughs> but then it's like, we're able to tell each other, I see that you're not acting yourself without saying it in front of the kids. And on top of that, because we're able to, I don't want to say correct each other, but because we're able to show each other where we're at in that, we've also taken, it's something that we've worked really hard with over the years, is that we'll go back to the kids and apologize. Like, our kids know that our house is a safe space, and even when we come out of packet and act in ways that is not normal to us, we still take the responsibility for that and go to our kids and apologize because that's teaching them to do the same. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we, um, the reason why we're able to, and I, I know the word confront is a scary word, but we're able to confront each other when we're acting in a behavior that's not normal to us yeah. is because we've set goals mm-hmm. to how we want to be in front of our kids. Yeah. So without that goal, there's no way to remind each other, hey, we're not meeting that goal. Mm-hmm. But we've given each other that permission. Yeah. We've, given, we've elevated each other to that place of authority to say, hey, when I'm not meeting the goal that we've set, call me on it. Mm-hmm. Call me on it. Because I want to be a great dad. Yeah. And in all honesty, I think every single guy in here and every single mom, I think that we all operate in a little bit of a deficiency. Like, we thought we were going to be much better parents than we actually turned out to be. Like, we look back and like, dang, man, I, I thought I was going to have more energy. I thought I was going to play with my kids more. Mm-hmm. I thought I was going to, like, roll on the floor and wrestle my son all the time. <laughs> and, like, I'm kind of not as good at this thing as I thought I was going to be, right? I, I'm a much better, like, friends to people's kids than actual parents sometimes. And you look back at that, but I want to set some goals. Yeah. So if I'm getting angry with my kid or I'm raising my voice or, or I'm acting in a way that I, is outside of a goal... She has the absolute right to text me and say, hey, tone it down. Yeah. And then, I mean, that doesn't mean I appreciate it in the moment. <laughs> but we always go back, like she said, and apologize to our kids. Mm-hmm. I'm going to talk to the dads for like two seconds, two minutes. Dads, if, if you use anger as a way to control your wife in front of your daughter, you're raising a codependent daughter. Yeah. You're raising a girl who's going to marry an alcoholic or an abuser mm-hmm. because you've taught her that this type of behavior is acceptable. Yeah. And giving in to anger is what you do. Mm-hmm. That is not the model. No. Dads, dads, we're better than that. Husbands, we're be- we're, we are yeah. better than that. And I'm not trying to knock off your machismo. I'm not trying to knock you down a peg and not say that you're not the head of your household. Be the head of your household in love. Yeah. Run your house and rule your house in love. Be the example of all those things in love. Yeah. And if you have a major, major problem with anger, go talk to somebody. Mm -hmm. Find out what the root cause of that anger issue is because there's a reason why you're being angry to the person you've committed your entire life to. Mm-hmm. Think about that for a second. I would sit back and realize, man, I'm being angry to the person I'm going to go to bed with. And now she ain't going to want to do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd be darned if I'm laying on the couch. <laughs> so then we're both going to be sleeping in the same bed, angry, not talking, not doing nothing. <laughs> and we ain't going to sleep because we're thinking about how mad we are. Yep. It's, it's horrible. Horrible. Why do I want to live this way? This is, not, this is not the way I want to live. Yeah. Right? A person grants honor most frequently on the basis of position, status, or wealth. But it can also be granted based upon a person's character. Yeah. 
Now listen, I got, I'll be a little transparent. I told first service, I'll tell you guys this. Uh, the day after Christmas, I went down to Florida. I was doing a job down there, and I was uh, on the way to, to, to go to, to work that day, and I was going through a work zone, and this guy cut me off. I didn't get angry or nothing, but the way he cut me off was going to kind of set me back a little bit. I need to get in front of him. So I punched it. I went around him. I knew I was going into a work zone, a uh, traffic work zone, but I knew I could beat him if I just gunned it, I could get in front of him. So I did. What I didn't see was that there was a police officer, <laughs> like parked right there. So I, I blow past that police officer in a work zone. I look up. He didn't move. So I was like, oh, shoot. I got away with it. And I even said to the guys in the car, in the truck, I had th three other guys in the truck. I was like, yo, if he got me, that would have been a fat ticket. Woo, glad he didn't get me. About 10 miles down the road, whoop, whoop. <laughs> Pull me over. <laughs> Walks up to the window. What do I say? Hello, officer. <laughs> Good afternoon, officer. Do you know how I pulled you over? No, sir. You never say you know why. No, sir. He said, I got you going 69 in a 35 mile an hour work zone. I said, okay. <laughs> in my mind, I said, I was doing 75. <laughs> He's like, license and proof of insurance. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. No, sir. Yes, sir. Now, listen, he ain't my friend. I don't like him. I don't even respect him. I don't know him. Yeah. But because of his position, Mm -hmm. I show him honor. Yeah. Honor is not something earned. Honor is something given yeah. based upon the person's position in your life. We give each other honor. Yeah. We don't earn honor. We give it because of the position that we hold in each other's lives. Yeah. And if you're wondering about the ticket, yeah, I did, I did get a ticket. <laughs> While honor is an internal attitude of respect, courtesy, and reverence, it should be accompanied by action. Mm. Because internal honor without external expression is just lip service. Yeah. People do this in the Christian world. And we're, we're reminded by God not to do that. In Isaiah 29, 13, the Lord said... Because this people draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips while their hearts are far from me and their fear of me is a commandment taught by men. He's saying, they're just saying it, they're not actually living it. Yeah. It's just lip service. Mm -hmm. We must live out honor in our homes. Honor is not just in word, it must also be completed in deed. Wives, honor your husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body and is himself its savior. Now as the church honors Christ, so also wives should honor in everything to their husbands. This commandment is honor. When a man feels honored in his house, he's going to show it and he's going to show love. When he feels good about himself, he's going to make sure everybody else feels good about themselves. You know, and so when he's not honored, it's impossible for him to show love. He's going to be upset. He's going to feel his self-esteem is going to be down. He's not going to feel like he has a place that he really should be in your home. So in our home, mm -hmm. she knows one of the major, major things that I, I do not like, I feel completely dishonored, mm -hmm. is when she interrupts me telling a story or when I'm talking. Now, listen, I'm not trying to be machismo, none of that. It just bothers me like you feel like what you have to say is more important than what I have to say. So I'm just going to shut down. Yeah. And I'm like, all right, then you take the story. All right, obviously, I'm not telling it good enough, so go ahead and take it. Now, I mean, we can laugh that off and we can say, well, it's cultural. You know, yeah. we're Hispanic. You know, we're Puerto Rican and everybody talks at the same time. <laughs> no, you're inconsiderate. <laughs> you're dishonoring. Well, let's just call it what it is. Right? And so for me, I'm going to shut down. And yeah. then she gets upset that I shut down, mm -hmm. right? Then she's like, oh, fuck, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, whatever, I'm sorry. But in that moment, there's now this friction, right? Yeah. When a man feels dishonored, 
it's very difficult for him to express love. Mm -hmm. And when a woman doesn't feel loved, it's impossible yeah. for her to express honor. And this becomes the downward spiral of your relationship. Mm -hmm. yeah. So she keeps dishonoring, and you keep withholding love. Yeah. Now, we're not talking about SEX here. We're just talking about the relational love, mm -hmm. relational attention. I'm dishonored, so I'm not showing you love. Yeah. Dishonored, no love. Dishonored, no love. This relationship's never going to rebound. Mm -hmm. It's this downward spiral. And here, let's just call this what it is, too. We've been married 22 years. We've been married as long as we've been single, yeah. right? So half our lives, literally half our lives, we've been together. And I know that a lot of people have this statement that divorce isn't in our vocabulary. Well, guess what? Divorce is in ours. Mm -hmm. It is in ours. So we're going to make sure very hard that it doesn't happen. Yeah. When you say it's not then you're, you're under no obligation to actually fix anything. Yeah. So, well, no matter what I do, they're stuck with me. What a miserable existence. Yeah. That we're going to say, you know what? No, there are certain things that if you do, I'm out of here. Yeah. So let's not do those. Mm -hmm. Let's work hard to lift each other up and yeah. promote the best in each other. Mm -hmm. Come on, we need to be honest, somebody up in here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, you're right. I think a lot of times people just say they ain't going nowhere. You just take the other person for granted, and they're not going anywhere. And then nine times out of ten, they go somewhere, and then you're left there like, what happened? And you find that a lot of times you'll see that occur, and then you're doing all the stuff that you wouldn't do for the first person to the next person. Where if you would have just done it in the first place, you would have been good. So the Bible mm -hmm. says, wives, honor your husbands. Yeah. It doesn't say, husband, honor your wives. It says, husband, love, love your wife. Mm -hmm. Okay, why? Because wives didn't love their husbands back when this was written. Mm -hmm. A wife was selected. Yeah. A man was walking down the street. He said, hubba, hubba, whoa, huh? <laughs> Saw this hottie, went to her, hus her dad and was like, I'll give you five goats, three chickens, and 20 acres of property. <laughs> and he was like, sounds like a good deal to me. Here's my daughter. Married her off. So it was her duty, when this was written, yeah. it was her duty to honor him. Yeah. Now, we understand that's not how life works today, but a man cannot express honor if he's not loved in his home. Yeah. All right? So you have two sides of a man. You got one man who he's at work all day long, hates his job, does not feel appreciated, is overworked, he comes home and is expecting his love tank to be filled of appreciation mm -hmm. that he was just at work all day, busting his butt to make the mortgage at a job he hates just for you. Mm -hmm. Are you going to give that to him? Yeah. Or you got the husband who goes to work and he's a winner. I mean, he's honored at work. Everybody on the job loves him. They talk about him. They lift him up. Then he comes home and he's dishonored at home. Might as well go back to work. At least there I'm a winner. At least there I'm a hero. I come here, I'm treated like crap. Moment I come home, gotta run your mouth. Come on, somebody. Yeah. That man can't show love. Mm -hmm. He can't show love because he feels dishonored. He doesn't feel appreciated. If he can be shown love, yeah. I mean, if he can be shown honor then he can express the love. Yeah. Somebody has to give in. Mm -hmm. Somebody has to make the step yeah. towards the better relationship. Hopefully, you're both mature enough to set some goals mm -hmm. and say, hey, when, when, when we're feeling this is off and we're out of pocket, if we can't talk about it, shoot me a text. Yeah. A loving text. <laughs> Not a vindictive, under the table kind of <laughs> nasty text. How do we get there? Romans 12, 10. I don't know how we've missed this one. Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, obviously, we've, we've gone back and forth and we've talked about, you know, a lot of times we're upset, so we got to make everybody else upset, and we're like, well, if he was acting honorably, I would honor him. 
And if she would honor me, I would love her. But the scripture is not an if-then statement. If he X, Y, Z, then I will. We are getting two completely separate commands. And our job is to follow what our command is. Regardless of how the other person is acting, regardless of you like him at that moment or not, our job, my job is to honor him, and his job is to honor me. Love you. Love you. Love me. Sorry. <laughs> and when we do our jobs, even if the person is not doing the other, their job, it really does change the dynamic of the relationship. Because somebody can only be nice to you for so long before you're like, all right, fine, you know. And you start feeling good. Even if you, you know, even when you want to not like somebody, when they start, like, getting in there, you're like, fine. I do feel kind of good when they compliment my whatever, you know. And so then you start doing things for them, and they start doing things for you. And it's a win-win for everybody, really. But I think what's important is that we have to learn the ways that people like to be honored. Um, like he said earlier, he does not like when he gets interrupted in a story. And I see it, and I see it in him, and I see it in one of our kids. She gets real, when you interrupt her, it's almost like they deflate. Like, forget it. Like, you didn't care enough about me to listen to what I was saying. Or I know a lot of times um, when he comes home, he needs a few minutes to, like, decompress. So you're not coming at him with, I need you to do X, Y, and Z right now. Mind you, he still has his shoes on and his backpack is still on his back, you know? And in reverse, he a lot of times finds th little things that I like. Um, whether it's sometimes he'll just even, like, Pinterest me, like, we need to go here. And it's like a cool vacation or something. It just... It makes life easier, and it makes life lighter. And I feel like, especially in these days, everything's so heavy all the time. Sometimes you wake up and you're just like, <sighs> and if you don't have that person who's uplifting you, who's loving you and honoring you, it just makes it so much worse. Yeah, the thing I'd say after 22 years of um, struggling to figure out how to have a great marriage. Yeah. It's the little tiny things that you do consistently. Mm -hmm. I know we all would like to do one big thing and fix it all. Yeah. It doesn't exist. Mm -mm. One grand vacation doesn't fix all the romance. Yeah. One counseling session doesn't fix the communication. Mm -hmm. It's every single day sending a text message. Yeah. Every single day writing a love note. Mm -hmm. Every single day, less of you, more of them. And when that is not happening, and listen, I'm just going to tell you, when that's not happening, we're in a world that is trying to split you apart. Yeah. TV, social media, the radio, your job is trying to split you apart. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You have to be smarter than that. Mm -hmm. It's the little tiny things that I know she likes, she knows that I like, that make it worth it and, and work it out in the long run. Yeah. Honestly, having kids is not enough today. Yeah. Ha having kids, I, I think they said by the year 2030, 78% of children will be in fatherless homes. Mm -hmm. 2030. Yeah. Wild. Wild. Mm -hmm. And you see it now, like we've, we work hard at our relationship and I was talking to my one kid one day and she, she mentioned something about us being gross to her friends and her friends are like, wait, your parents like each other? Like it's such a hard, like today, odd thing. Today we do. Yeah. <laughs> but like the majority of the friends come from split homes and even the homes that are together, they may not be the nicest homes. So it just... It's like a shock that they're like, wait, but your parents hang out? Who else am I going to hang out with? <laughs> yeah, we were asked one time, what's the secret to a long-lasting marriage? There ain't no secret. Mm -hmm. There ain't no secret. We just kept showing up for each other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. we made, we've made some big, big mistakes. We've made the biggest blunders that the Bible talks about. Yeah. And you, 
forgive, and you get help, you get therapy, you get counseling, you talk to somebody, you don't hold it in, you don't keep, you don't keep the, the, the memories in a bag and use it as weapons against each other, yeah. you're not angry at each other, you don't talk negative to each other, mm-hmm. that, that, that's how you, you keep working and, and we've set goals, we're going to improve. Yeah. We don't want to be miserable when we're 65 years old and our kids are out of the house and we hate the person that's across the room. Yeah. I'm not going to live that way. Like, seriously, I'm not going to do that. Mm-hmm. I didn't stand at the altar with that in my mind. Yeah. That one day I'm going to hate the person that I'm married to, but I'm going to be stuck with them because I'm afraid of God. <laughs> no, we're going to get better. We're mm-hmm. going to work on it. The big thing is trust. Yeah. Trust, it comes down to that. I couldn't be married to someone who I couldn't trust with my finances. Yeah. If she was the kind of person who would like take the credit card and go run it up and go shopping and all the money that I was working to raise and invest and for retirement was gone, I couldn't be married to a person like that. Yeah. But we had those conversations, now to the singles, we had those conversations early on dating. Mm -hmm. I said, can you be married to a pastor? Can you know that I'm going to get phone calls where I'm going to have to get up and leave the house? Yeah. That there's going to be years building the church that I'm not going to be around and you're going to have to run the house. Yeah. That I, finances was big for me. I'm a go-getter. I've got multiple businesses, and I'm, I'm a, and, but I, I got to trust you with the money. You can't like, just take the money and go do whatever. Mm-hmm. So early on, I mean, duh, we were dirt poor when we first got <laughs> married. We made an agreement. If we spent over $25, we had to talk about it. Yeah. We had to talk about it. So maybe if that's one thing that you need to build into your relationship, learning how to do finances and trust each other, set a number. Maybe it's 50 bucks, 100 bucks. Yeah. If it's over $100, we talk about it. <laughs> now, that doesn't mean that you get to spend $99 multiple times. <laughs> I'm just saying. Split payments. <laughs> yeah, because that, that just comes back to the, the state of honor. Yeah. I got to trust you. Mm-hmm. Communication. Trust. And this idea of honoring one another. Yeah. It takes the sting, it takes the choke out of submission. And it says, no, I'm going to hold the weight of what I value you as. I'm going to remember that we walked down the aisle yeah. as 21-year-old knucklehead kids. <laughs> and we stood there crying our eyes out, snotting all over the place. And said, I love you. I'm giving my life to you. What was it that I felt then that I'm not feeling now or drew me then that I need to remember to keep this thing working? Mm -hmm. Now, to the person who, you know, maybe that's already done and gone. This is not one of those, like, um, you've ruined your life. uh, God's upset with you. That's, that's That's not the side of this either. Yeah. My hope would be If you're divorced or you've gone through a split up or whatever it is, learn better for next time. Mm -hmm. Don't don't not love again. Don't not open your heart again. Learn from that experience. Learn from what didn't work then. Mm -hmm. Maybe the personalities were incompatible. Maybe one of you or both of you didn't want to work at it. Maybe you couldn't honor each other. Bring it to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Ask him for forgiveness. Repent. Change your thinking about yourself. Change your thinking about what marriage is. And say, Lord, lead me to someone that I can honor. Mm -hmm. Lead me to someone that I can love. And let joy come back into your heart. Don't don't live out of that negative, that negative mindset. Father, we come to the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for this time that we could start this series on relationship, that we could have this continued conversation about marriage, about raising a family, how to get along with one another. Lord, I pray that the word today was inspiring for us to work on our own relationships, to work on future relationships. I pray, God, that you would be the healer of the brokenhearted, the mender of the wounds. Lord, I pray that husbands and wives can communicate with one another without yelling at each other, that they can communicate in a life-giving, life-building way in their homes, 
that their children are seeing an example of two people that love each other and want the best for one another. Help us to raise kids that have healthy relationships and can articulate their feelings without abuse. Yes. Lord, as we leave here today, I thank you that we can have peace and rest in you, peace in our homes and joy in our homes, families that play together and worship together. Lord, I bless everyone in the sound of my voice. They're blessed coming in. They're blessed going out. Everything they set their hands to will prosper and be successful in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. amen. See you next time. Thank you for watching today's message. My name is Ashley, and if this message has made an impact in your life in any way, I'd like to ask you to do a couple of things. First, we want you to like and subscribe to our channel and join us right here every Sunday at 9.30 a.m. or 11.30 a.m. The next thing I'm gonna ask you to do is take a next step on your journey, and we would love to help you do that. You can head on over to FamilyChurchNY.com or email us at team at FamilyChurchNY.com to get started today.